Hey everyone, I'm Nathan. This is Sean. Welcome back to Barely Tactical. Today's topic, prepping. The fantasy that we all love to use to rack up our credit cards for the apocalypse that will probably never come. Um, it's our excuse to not pay our student loans, miss a car payment, heck. Bankruptcies, uh, you can do that in limited times, right? There's no, there's no stop to those? It's true. Yeah. yeah. So buy ammunition, buy tinned beans, and be a prepper because that is smart financially. Yeah. Just a reminder, we're going to be focusing on the rounds or cartridges in this case and not the firearms themselves, even though there's some really nice and maybe even some new firearms uh, poking here. A little, little preview for you. Uh, so what is a uh, what is a kind of apocalypse like prepper round? Yeah, uh, what should we stockpile if we're preppers? Well, if you're anything like us, money is still a factor until it's not. Uh, so obviously it has to be within a certain price point. We can't say that you're getting, you know, 600 Nitro Express or something like that, or like, you know, that's my prepper round. Um, it has to be plentiful. I think it also has to be in something that you can actually shoot, not a one of one wildcat gun or cartridge. And it has to be, you can, you know, it's something you can maintain, you can get a stockpile. lot of, you can stockpile a lot of right now. Yeah, if you're buying it in a five pack for $29.99, it's not stockpile. We yeah. want like 50 packs, 100 packs, 1,000 packs, plastic buckets that overflow a little bit when you shake them. Exactly. So if you can walk out of like a Canadian tire or sale with a big bucket full and uh, maybe it didn't, no, it probably still broke the bank. Let's be honest, ammo is expensive. But you at least got the bucket. You got the bucket. That's the main thing. Uh, we're going to be starting out with an honorable mention though. 223. I'm sure you guys probably guessed it'd be in this video. However, in 2024, it is no longer in the meta. It is too expensive and... For us Canadians, most platforms that shoot 223 are prohibited, yeah. uh, at least the cool ones. You can still get your cool bolt guns, a Tavor if you're rich. It, it really comes down to platform. I mean, you might be one of the lucky ones who's sitting on a bunch of ARs and such. That's great. But we're almost coming at this from, let's say you got into firearms today, 223 is not what you're going to go for because you don't magically have ARs in the basement or buried in your backyard. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't bury ARs in the basement. Let's just agree to disagree. No, you're wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to start off with uh, something that uh, everyone pro probably does have, which is 12 gauge. Uh, we specifically chose 12 gauge in this case because it's it's everywhere. I mean, there's so many 12 gauge shotguns. There's so many 12 gauge platforms of all kinds. You know, semi-auto, pump, lever, all that kind of stuff. One barrel, two barrel, three barrel. Exactly. And the great thing about 12 gauge is, as we said before, like you can do. Pretty much anything, anything you need to get done. Could you shoot do. a solid projectile at something far away? If, if only, right? You know, but uh, could you illuminate the sky from a distance? That's true. I really want to shoot a flare. Oh, could you God. throw lots of small pellets at small things? Could you physically pick up a shell and throw it at Nathan's head? No, sir. Somebody brought it's me a some rhetorical money. question, Farley. What? That's a rhetorical question. That means you don't have to answer it. Probably, and it might hurt a little bit too. Tests yeah. to follow, um, but it's a it's a shotgun. Like it's it's a twelve gauge. We could have said twenty, uh, which I'm not saying is not four ten is right out. If you say four ten, please don't subscribe. Yeah. Um, if yeah. you say ten gauge, prohib. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. diameter. If you say sixteen gauge, uh, hello, we you know hello from England. <laughs> yeah, to, Sweden you know, and Norway. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Sure, while you're drinking some tea. Um, but yeah, 12 gauge is good. Now, what also is good is your standard 308 or 30 out six. Uh, it's a full house 30 caliber hunting rifle, or maybe you have a cool semi automatic. Um, heck, they even make them in lever guns. But this is affordable. You can get, while not as cheap as it used to be, military surplus 762 by 51. But Nathan, that's not 308 for our purposes. It is. Um, you can still get freedom buckets of it. It is expensive, but what is it expensive in 2024? Yeah. And honestly, again, plentiful firearms, plentiful rounds. I mean, 30 out 6 is. Uh, I, when was it made? Uh, you know, I feel like I should know that when, how long it's been here, but uh, I think we might be coming up on, you know. It's 115th anniversary. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's really. It's, also, we went with 30 cal because. That's another thing too. In a lot of circles, it's like 308 is seen as kind of vanilla, but that's exactly a, its benefit in this case is like you can load it up to however you want. 30 cal tips, like if you had to reload during the angry no share time, yeah. you're going to find like, you know. 110 grain to 230 grain. Yeah. 
So plus there might be things lying around that, you know, spit these out pretty well. Uh, yeah, so next uh, we're gonna go with its, uh, we'll say its Eastern kissing cousin, which is 762 by 39. Now, if you're in the States, I hate you because <laughs> this means a lot more to you than it will to us. Because sadly, we can't have the fun, cool thing. Nothing was more profitable than Oftimont Kalashnikova, model of 1947, more commonly known as the AK-47 or Kalashnikov. Well, we do have plenty of SKSs. We have plenty of Type 81s and other things. And this is just such, like, it's such a bulk round. I mean, like, I'm surprised they don't, like, every time you go to a gun store and buy something, they don't just, like, sprinkle a few of these in your hand. Like, it's one of the last things you can get in a giant metal tin that you open like a can of Spam. Uh, it is very stockpileable. And yeah. at 40 cents a round, it's cheap by 2024 standards, so. Exactly. And it's still very effective, too. Like, don't, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't poo on this round. Like, it's, no. it's still very capable of it's a lot of people who have uh, found out how capable it is. Yeah, uh, it's the ballistic uh, um, efficient or but a ballistic cousin of thirty thirty. Like if you put a chart out, they have the same drop, the same energy. People have killed moose of thirty thirty. Would I do it? Probably not. But could you do it? Maybe. Now, if I had a you know full auto thirty thirty and a moose, <laughs> no. don't do that. Um, yeah, but uh, it's a it's a great round. Well, next, and this one. This is a little controversial. Nine millimeter, um, very bulkable. You can get it in thousand packs from a dozen different brands still to this day at almost any shop. Um, you can get it in a cool carbine. Yep. And if you were cool enough, and this is only if you were cool enough to get one, handguns. Say, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Don't pull out the nine. Lots of them are in nine millimeter. If you got one before the ban, why the heck not? I legitimately didn't know he had that. <laughs> you, you son of a bitch, you were hiding that on me. Small the back carry. <laughs> yeah, I would have. Uh, I would have let him pass. He would have crossed the border, and you know, that would have been on me. Um, but yeah, as David said, like for PCCs, just like health carbines, uh, it's great in Canada. Again, we <laughs> these videos are just like Canada sucks. <laughs> but like honestly, because with uh, with handguns, I mean, like it, it's 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 a struggle to find a handgun that isn't in like you know nine mil of some sort, like you know that. It's the most prolific it's, one. It's everywhere, yeah. So nine mil makes a lot of sense. And PCCs, they're the meta. There's a dozen different ones that you could still get in Canada, yeah. completely non restricted. It's true. Uh, if you would like to see more of this, uh, you should check out our PC nine video. Little plug there. Uh, it's pretty fun. Which I guess, shockingly, we're, we're going to this pretty quickly, it brings us to our last one, which I don't know if you can really see, it's the 22. Uh, we'll say 22 LR in this case. Yeah. Um, in terms of, if, if we were doing scales of what was, you know, oh, what could you buy the most for, for your, you know, bang for your buck? Like, how much could you carry? This would win in all categories. Lethality, maybe not so much, but uh, I mean, it's a, it's a 22. It has its uses. They're... The internet's kind of split, it seems, where there are people who are like, oh, 22, that's a girl's gun, or like something silly. And then there's the people who have killed a chubacabra at 3,000 <laughs> miles while uh, with iron sights with a 22. Yeah. Also, uh, you should check out 22 Man from uh, Garantham because, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, 22, I mean, like, you could walk around with hundreds of them on you and you probably wouldn't even notice. And it's good for, I mean, like, you know, it's anything like reasonable. Small game. Like squirrel, well, small game, yeah. exactly. There's also a plethora of guns that have, or that fire. I mean, how many 22s do we have in this house? More than one. More than one. Take that, Cesar, for not telling you. Uh, <laughs> so, You'll have to pull the sales records from the stores we yeah, bought them from. Yeah, I'm watching you, RCMP. Um, <laughs> and 22s, to talk about the platform, they're often light, and they often are inexpensive. So you could get into the 22 platform, if you mm -hmm. will. Even a single shot like the Kui 39. Check out that video as well. <laughs> um, you can get a Kui and 20,000 rounds for not thousands of dollars. Yeah. Like hundreds of dollars. I think actually another category, maybe we didn't even factor this in, but it, it, it works too. For these, it's all about being able to practice and shoot them too, like while, you know. While hoarding while it. While hoarding or, it. While preparing. Because if you hoard like, you know, let's say you hoard like a thousand rounds of something and you're like, cool, I've never shot this gun. And then, you know, bad things happen. It's like, you're not reliable with that weapon. 22, like, you could spend days shooting this and not break the bank. 
No. Like that's that's not, like you know you, you become very proficient with it. Same with like shotguns and such. So. All these I think hit that marker of you could rack up lots of seat time, if you will, mm -hmm. with that platform and while still stockpiling it. I think so. Thirty out six is a little, little maybe a little pricey. Maybe you you know don't fire as many of those, but uh, it's still fun. So yeah, I think that's our list. I think so. Well, this has been uh, our first video in the new studio. Uh, thanks for dropping by. We have plenty more ideas coming. So, uh, but until then, keep your sights fixed on Barely Tactical, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.